Michael with us on the C2D Business. The Indonesian Venture Capital and Startup Association or Anfesindo is targeting 20 trillion rupiah or around 1.27 billion US dollars in venture capital funding by 2024, continuing the positive growth in disbursement through November 2023. As of November 2023, the distribution of venture capital in Indonesia reached 17.39 trillion rupiah. However, according to Bain & Company, venture capital investment in 2023 fell 70 to 80 percent annually due to the cautious sentiments stemming from factors such as high interest rate climate. Nevertheless, Amfesindo is optimistic that the 20 trillion rupiah target of venture capital funding this year can be met. Meanwhile, in January 2024, the Financial Services Authority or OJK issued a roadmap for the development of venture capital firms in Indonesia for the period of 2024 to 2028. The establishment of the roadmap is aimed at strengthening the country's venture capital company regime, which has experienced rapid growth in recent years. Now to delve more into the topic today, joining me, the Head of Investment at Benny Ventures, Gita Sherry. Welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Hi. So, uh, let's get, get straight to the question. You're like one of the entrepreneurs who turned in to become a venture capitalist. So, as one of the first entrepreneurs to secure over a million US dollars in venture capital funding in Southeast Asia, how does a startup typically go about securing a funding? Okay. Um, yeah, so I was one of the first female entrepreneurs uh, in the ecosystem. I've been in the ecosystem since 2010, and I was an entrepreneur for almost 13 years. And I would say that um, to become an entrepreneur who can attract venture capital funding, I think the irony is you have to not think about funding. So you go back to basics. So first principles thinking, going back to fundamentals, which is are you creating a market solution for an actual market need, not a market want? And will people pay money for that? And will people pay more money than what you spend over time? All right, so the fundamentals. So just basics. Yeah. Basic fundamentals. Now, after running your own startups for 13 years, you mentioned, yeah. so what motivated you to transition into venture capital? Yeah. Um, Great question, simply because I made the transition because I have a background before that in investing already. And I realized that I'm more passionate about investing than I am with operating companies, <laughs> um, which is one of those realizations that you should have learned earlier on, but I guess it took me more than a decade and building several companies to learn that, hey, maybe my strength is actually in mentoring other entrepreneurs and founders so that they can avoid the stupid mistakes I made because I've made more than a decade of them, uh, which means I'm pretty rich with experience on that. And right now with my current position, what I really try to do is um, learn from the entrepreneurs and hear what they're um, saying, what they're sharing, and learning from the market from them and sharing what my mistakes were. Because uh, I think in the end, right, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to be very comfortable with failure. That is really how you iterate, how you create products, how you find product market fit, and how you ensure that you go back to the fundamentals, which is again and again and again, will people pay money for what you make? And they'll spend more on it than what you spend as a oh, cost. Yeah. All right. So now, Ojeka, as, as mentioned earlier, <laughs> they created a new roadmap to get to that 20 trillion. Now, does Indonesian VC have an advantage over a foreign VC and when it comes to investing in Indonesian startups? In the end, I kept saying fundamentals. And when I say fundamentals, the big fundamental is product market fit. So the question is, does your product fit the market need? And it's very hard to fit a market need if you don't know your market. And that is why I think Indonesian VCs definitely have an advantage because no matter what, we're from this area, we know what's been going on. We've seen the history. I mean, I've seen the venture capital market, you know, grow throughout the years for, again, more than a decade. And you need to know all of these things rather than just transplant yourself and not even be in the market and know what gets to product market fit, which is why I'm very bullish on Indonesian VCs um, over time and for a longer period of time be successful in our own market because in the end you need to know a market to create product market fit all right so yeah. can you give us an idea of how does the indonesian uh, digital ecosystem compare to other southeast asian countries yeah 
Well, the Indonesian ecosystem is definitely by far the largest. So from a macros perspective, we all know the macros, right? We all know it's almost 300 million people. We know that the vast majority is still of a productive age. Um, we know that the country is increasing its GDP per capita very rapidly. We know that um, we might even get to a developed country status in several um, decades. So all of these things are very positive outlook, but the challenge is always, what kind of game are you playing? And when you're playing a long-term game, which hopefully you should, because venture capital is a long-term stance, uh, in general, you won't know if a company is really going to do well from its um, inception all the way to its exit, probably for about seven to 10 years, plus one, plus one, plus one. <laughs> so it's a long game. And so I think, you know, when you're looking at Indonesia, always think about it from a long-term perspective and just be in it for the long run, because that's really when you can find your alpha, when you get your product market fit and you get it early enough. So I. Yeah, of course, I'm very bullish on it. I wouldn't be here if I <laughs> didn't, you know, but it's also super important for us to see the potential of expanding our products to the rest of the region because I'm very bullish too on the idea of a lower tech um, solution for large scale problems. And I'm saying this because the majority of the world is not like the United States or other developed markets where they already have 5G everywhere. In the majority of countries in the world, they probably don't have that. So they're looking for a solution that's simple, but that can solve a very large scale problem. So I think let's not try to copy Silicon Valley or Europe and just try to localize the game and make it ours and find a solution for our market. Oh, that's interesting. Now, yeah. for, uh, you once mentioned that iteration is crucial for developing Indonesia digital ecosystem. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. <laughs> I think I said that once during a BNI event. Okay. And really what I meant about that is getting very comfortable with the idea of failure. So a really big part of iteration is you're coming up with a process or a sequence and then you create a sequence of outcomes, right? But in order to get to product market fit, which, by the way, can also change as your market changes, right? Um, it always requires experimentation. Now, here's the thing, experimentation requires costs. And yes. when I say costs, people always think money, only money, right? Yes. But actually, the largest cost is time. Because time is the only thing that you cannot buy, like, and it never comes back. Right. So always question, is this the cost I am willing to bear if this doesn't work out well. And this is also why it's so hard to cut loss and it's so hard to quit and it's so hard to change simply because we put in the cost and so we become much more uh, averse to changing when we have to actually be more, um, we, we just need to be faster with our decision making and know when to cut loss or when to quit when the time is right. So you're in uh, Benny Ventures, I bet you, you see in a lot of startups, hundreds maybe, it's like, what will it take to say, a no to a, a startup's company. It's like, let's say there's a company that people have been talking about and like, sure. it's, it's, it sounds great. Like, what would, what would it take for a Gita Shaif to say, no, this is not the one for us? So unfortunately, if other founders have watched me, I've said no <laughs> to a lot. <laughs> um, and for me, this is the importance of governance. So governance is so important. Um, it is the way that you create safeguards and parameters in your business so that you're not just throwing money at every shiny thing that you see, which is very, actually very attractive for people to do, right? If you have cash, if you have dry powder, why not just spread it to as many <laughs> things you find to be shiny and fun? And so it's important for us and BNI, for example, I know that we have a very um, thorough due diligence uh, structure. We have ver very good governance uh, requirements, and we do all of that to safeguard ourselves from ourselves and it's something that I even recommend a lot of entrepreneurs to do, no matter what stage you are. Always try to see what can you do to safeguard yourself from yourself so that you're always open and have a learning mindset that maybe your opinion is simply just not the right one. And so also you're faster in making your decisions, including the decision, if you need to, to one day cut loss. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know, when, when we're talk, talking about VC, there's a lot of words, which is one of them is always saying exit strategy. Yeah. Is that a must for a VC to, like, oh if, I, if I'm a startup yeah. so, and I come to you like, okay, I, I need amount of money. Sure. W will, you, will there always be like, what is the exit strategy on this? Okay, I'm not really sure how um, famous I'll be with this <laughs> uh, thing that I'm about to say, but I hate to say it to you, 
for a lot of founders, I think it's very important to understand that founders and venture capital naturally don't have the same goals. Okay. Okay? And before everyone goes, oh my gosh, burn her, um, look at it this way. So a venture capital must have exit in the end. You're not putting other people's money to work so that you can lose the money. Somehow, some way, you have to make the money back. A lot of founders, though, they might have different goals, and probably one of their goals may not always be to exit at a certain time. Maybe they want to exit much later. Even if they IPO, they might want to stay there, right? Yes. We don't know. That's why it's so important also to investors and founders to communicate all the time so that you know what your goals are. But naturally, you will have different exits in mind and also different ways of looking at the business, right? And so I really want to empower founders here to just be very upfront and open with one, what do they want out of the business? Two, what is the timeline of what they want out of the business? For example, how long do you want to stay in the business until you go, this isn't worth my effort anymore, right? And then uh, three is how can you communicate that so that there's internal recognition within your team, co-founders, and also with your investors? and not just keep getting pushed around by like different opinions coming in, someone on the board saying something. And that is why I think it's so important to have those exits being talked about in the open very early on. Yeah. So it sounds like more like finding a marriage than a t an actual true love. Yeah. All right, so, so we know you're very active on, on social media. What, you talk about like investment, women. Yeah. So from your perspective, what is the best investment in life? Oh, yourself. Okay. <laughs> I, in money-wise or? No, yourself in every way. So I always say, um, everyone always thinks of investment as like cost, like money, yes. but it's not, it's time, right? So what is the best use of your time? So no matter what happens, no matter the results, because results oftentimes is also a question of timing. It's often a question of luck. It's often a question of other macro stuff that may not have anything to do with you. So the question is more, what are you doing now where you're going to enjoy the process no matter what the results are? That's so important to know because be careful of running a rat race when you don't even know if you want to be part of that race. All right. Well, yep. thank you so much, Kita Shai from Benny Venture Head Capital Investment. Thank you for being on the show. With that, we are going for a break. When we return, our daily recap from the stock market, you don't want to miss. Stay tuned.